Hi guys. So behind me here is the newly facelifted BMW 5 Series. And this particular example here, this is the 530e M Sport. Now, now as before, in Malaysia, the 530e continues to be priced lower than the 530i. Both variants of the of the 5 Series now come with M Sport trim as standard. There's no more 520i available. All right, but uh, because the 530e, by virtue of it being a plug-in hybrid, it gets to pay lesser tax, and as a result, it enjoys a lower price at 317,000 ringgit, 317. The 530i, in contrast, is priced at 368,000 ringgit. Now. What about the equipment difference that separates these two variants? Of course, the 530i gets a 252 horsepower 2 liter turbo engine of the B48 family. The 530e here gets a 184 horsepower engine, but when you combine it with the electric motor, you get net system output of 252 horsepower. In terms of equipment, the 530e here, unlike the first appearance of the 530e in Malaysia, the 530e now actually is quite decently equipped. You get a full M Sport package. You get LED headlamps that now no longer look like a lower spec item. But that being said, the 530i does get laser headlights and laser headlights are a substantial price upgrade in BMW internationally. You still get 360 degree, a good 360 degree camera, which is a significant improvement from the pre-facelift model. But the 530i additionally gives you heads up display, additionally gives you Harman Kardon sound system, additionally gives you adaptive cruise control and also a sunroof. So there is that equipment differentiation there to justify the price separation, even though actually the 530e, as you see here, is already quite respectably equipped. So this refreshed front end of the 5 Series, it clearly brings the G30 in line with current generation BMW design. And I have to say, it is rather tastefully done. Because you see guys, bear in mind, the G30 was designed and launched at a time before BMW rolled out its all this current generation of big nose cars. Okay, so uh, when they want to integrate new generation design language into an existing model uh, that usually is a bit tricky and as we saw recently with the Mercedes E-Class uh, not quite easy to achieve cohesively but BMW I will have to say they have done a better job than Mercedes it, when it comes to integrating a new generation design language into an existing car. Uh, if you guys remember the first time when the 530e was launched in Malaysia, they launched it with the lower spec LED headlamps that looked nothing like what, they, what we see in the catalog. But this time around, all right, once again, the 530e still gets the lower spec headlight, but the difference is you can't tell it at first glance. This one at first glance next to the 530i, uh, you need to do a double take in order to differentiate that this is LED headlights versus laser headlights in the 530i. And look closely, all right, you can see these little details and there's the brushed metal finish on this surface that really makes this headlight look premium. Put in the effort to not uh, to not make it look cheap and I really really appreciate that all right previously if you remember the pre-facelift G30 headlamps 
uh, was designed with a more curvaceous kind of language now they straighten it up now it looks very angular so um you can see this is this is the original cut line of the pre-facelift headlamp here but uh one thing i have to say they have integrated it all very well it's just that you know the the different length of these two uh, elements when you look at the overall effect what they're trying to achieve is that they want to make this line here this character line from the bonnet shut line come down here in one um, in one harmonious line which makes the whole whole front end look better resolved front nose okay this is the front camera and you can see the the grill here the slats here actually has this additional design detail okay that makes it look that bit more sporty and that bit more premium and these are active shutters so it, it opens and closes according to your aerodynamic uh needs all right whether you need need to be more to be less drag or whether you need more air to cool the engine bay now we move to the side now these are the wheels but the overall look of this car right it's like it, it gives the impression that whoever that bought this car okay because this is this this new wheel design does not seem like typical BMW wheel design. It looks as if as um, the owner bought this car, all right, and then went to spend another ten k on 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 new wheels outside. Okay, so this is this is a very a properly nice rim design. This went piece here in the five thirty i. This is satin chrome. The frame here also is satin chrome in the five thirty i, but here in the five thirty e, it's gloss black. And personally. I like the gloss black treatment better and you know uh, BMW has always had this differentiation where with M Sport trim the door frames are, uh, are black or gloss black whereas in the non M Sport trim it's silver they didn't observe that with the 530i M Sport but here in the 530e M Sport that is uh, that is returned come to the back so uh, as with the pre facelift model there are exhausts either side in the back in the F10 when you have exhaust either side that denotes that you are sitting you are getting a higher variant model in the F10 when you have one exhaust each side it's the 535i when you have a trapezoidal exhaust it's the 550i when you're driving the 523 la 528 la 52 whatever right it's two exhausts on one side now with the G30 everything is is uh, one exhaust each side and M, it's only M spot you get its trapezoidal tips non M spot it's circular but now in Malaysia for the 530 uh, for the G30 facelift all standard M spot and this section here on the diffuser to make it more pronounced but uh, overall they've kept it neat and these tail lights here illuminate in a solid red beam more expressive more visible then this uh this black surrounds here smoke surrounds on the tail light this is a more successful facelift exercise if you compare it with the mercedes e-class or even the bmw's own 7 series for that matter okay the 5 series here definitely is a more a much better resolved facelift exercise so the boot has uh has powered release you can see boot space is of course compromised it's shallow it's long okay so you can still load a long luggage so so hidden compartments underneath here this floor underneath here this is the charging cable this is the home charging cable this pouch contains the home charging cable and under here as well all right and uh, you get powered closing okay now here's one thing to check out guys so there's this rubber trim here all right that channels the flow of water to this plastic piece here okay and is the purpose is to direct flow of water and you can see it just rain this part is wet but under here okay you see the metal area this is dry the whole purpose of this is to is to direct the flow of water down here all right but it does not go behind the tail lights all right powered closing interior we start with the rear now the door card wow beautiful color combo black contrast with uh, bmw calls this either vanesca brown or vanesca orange but it's a lovely combination well these sun shades here okay uh useful if you're traveling long distances uh you know along our north south highway right where the sun is always on one side 
uh, the two-tone color you know gives it a, a pleasant appearance and there's this trim insert here these two two trim inserts okay this polygonal shape here we contrast with the metal trim here very very nice okay uh this the the grab handle behind here is a soft touch plastic that feels quite pleasing here the door pockets is segmented so you can drop your bottles food containers your keys phone whatever at the back there's this m sport door seal here the seats okay here this cover all right of the isofix mounts is hinged this is the armrest all right this is designed to suit a variety of sizes so you can fold this up if you have a thinner cup or can yeah this you can adjust the opening of that very very clever so you have three individually adjustable headrests back here you've got rear zone climate control four zone climate control with fan speed and temperature adjustment two usb-c ports 12 volt socket this is my palm check out how deep it goes right in there definitely good enough to keep your phones i'm 170 centimeters tall got a fist of headroom above me great lean angle this is a very comfortable place to spend a long distance trip and down here you can see my legs are amply supported with great leg room in front of me there's another blower here as well so if you're seated here at the back you've got you've got blowers in the middle you've got blowers at the side very very nice and this is a lidded pocket as well if you want to keep your files and whatnot inside here is where they put the seat memory buttons and here there's the fuel lid release as well as the boot lid okay seat adjustment all right so if you have come from the pre-facelift g30 the first thing you may notice is that the instrument cluster this follows the new generation design of bmw instrument cluster and the screen this center screen is larger at 12.3 inches compared to before the rest of it is very very familiar so here this is a wireless charging tray two cup holders a usb a usb port 12 volt socket this is still the previous generation design okay there's a separate iDrive controller here and also here the the electronic shifter okay plus the switches here at the side and open here you can see inside this is a relatively shallow compartment but you get a USB-C port all this familiar switch gear from before great quality great touch uh, yeah so you can touch this to adjust blower speed all this fantastic quality switch gear um, certainly if you look at this and you compare it with its segment rivals the e-class e-class cabin honest in all honesty looks prettier looks more instagramable the volvo uh, s90 also looks more aesthetically attractive uh, you can even say the audi a6 is a more sophisticated cabin but somehow the 5 series cabin here stands out one fantastic build quality this feels more solid compared to that of the e-class that's for sure overall cabin here remains spot on this is an exceedingly easy car you know or interior to acclimatize compared to its rivals now the only thing is that this screen this is the latest generation bmw info uh info display and honestly this whole idea of putting the the tachometer on this side now this this one here is, is showing the uh, the hybrid gauge right but now let's say like if you go to the traditional tachometer design okay this whole you know counterclockwise way of reading it that still takes some getting used to it's still not as uh, intuitive to read compared to old-fashioned bmw gauges but i can understand why they do it because by putting the gauges here along the periphery it frees up the center central real estate area for them to put like you know a map here for example and that makes the display seem more vibrant more active more colorful looks more impressive but that being said um, as an older fashioned bmw owner i think they can still investigate further in how they can make this uh, look and read more intuitively 
Okay, so let's explore the screen a little. I just want to show you a couple, a few things. This is the central screen and uh, just want to show you guys. Firstly, the driving modes, all right? So you have elect pure electric driving mode, okay? You have hybrid drive, okay? You can, you can have sport configuration or you can have adaptive. Now, let me just show you in sport configuration, configure individual, Okay, so uh, from here you can see that the car has adaptive dampers. Okay, you can adjust the steering, you can adjust the engine response, you can adjust the transmission response as well. Now this button here, this is for you to configure the uh, the uh, ADAS system. So let's show you co uh, configure individual. So you have front collision warning that has pedestrian detection, you have lane departure warning, and more importantly, you also have lane change warning. Lane change warnings, now, the, there is steering intervention as well with the lane departure warning systems. And to me, I felt it's quite, the, the intervention actually is quite heavy, to be honest. You can really feel it, all right? When the, sta when the steering tries to pull you back into your lane, you can really feel it. Okay, so you have lane change warning, okay, to tell you if there's another car within your vicinity. Look at this graphic here. Is this a prototype light design that BMW uh, considered but rejected? Actually, I think this looks nicer than the one that they, that they have in the car, but that's my opinion. Lah. All right. So uh, one more thing to show you guys, put this into reverse. Now you have 360 degree camera. Okay, um, now let me just drive this on the, on the parking lot. Let me show you the camera system of this car. Now, uh, the 530e comes with 360 degree camera and the resolution is fantastic. But as you can see at the edge here, the stitching of the image is not quite so seamless if you compare it with that of Mercedes-Benz. So this is something that BMW really can, can improve. Now, here's another neat trick. So let's say I press this side here. It shows you the, uh, the side view and this comes in very, very handy when you are trying to park the car at a roadside next to, next to a curb or a drain all right and it also self adjusts the angle to give you a better perspective so that really is something rather cool okay and there's also this thing little thing called the reverse assistant okay so i'm going to try out something called the reverse assistant okay and let me just show you guys this is where I am parked now. All right, let's show you the surroundings here. And I'm gonna drive this car to a completely new spot. I'm gonna angle it this way. All right. And now I engage reverse gear hands off the wheel let's see how precisely it returns me to where i was wow oh, not bad wall Okay, now BMW is right now the only car maker, only car brand that every time when we pick a test car up from them, we receive two keys or in some cases three keys. Uh, the 530e here does not get the digital key, that's the one with the uh, color screen in, embedded in the key but to me I think that's not necessary because see the thing is that that digital key it may look fancy but remember it has the power consumption of your mobile phone so if you use that key every night you have to recharge the key so this regular key fork okay this is the one that we are all familiar with this is the one that you keep in your pocket 
and it allows you to lock and unlock the car and in this case uh, it has proximity detection so as I approached the car earlier you saw the car locked its uh, unlocked itself so now let me just take a step back all right and we see the car has locked itself back okay you see the side mirrors have folded this key and put here first this is the well this is what they call the i'm not sure what they call this but this is the card key all right uh this is non-powered and well it's the size of your credit card your ic or whatever so the idea is that this one if let's say like you are going i don't know play futsal badminton or whatever you don't want to carry so many things you don't want to carry a bulky key this one slots into your wallet or if in the case if you're a lady it slots nicely into your pouch and you know you just take this you just touch the the, the door all right and it opens okay get inside if you want to start the car what you need to do is place the card here inside this tray and you start the engine okay The 530E, um, I have to say overall, to drive, this car is just such a fabulous all-rounder. Um, you know, it's it does so many things so damn well. See, the thing is that this is a car that you can choose to either drive it like any other normal luxury car you can drive this thing like the camry and it will be and it is as quiet as you like as comfortable as you like driven this over a variety of shitty surfaces and this car just feels comfortable it is such a pleasant car to carry about your day-to-day -day business in fact right now at this moment i'm driving right wheels on tarmac left wheels on on a uh, brick pavement and i might as well be driving on silk it is that smooth it is amazing to think that this car is set up with supposedly stiffer m sport suspension let's try driving the car and shit i'm actually in sport mode i actually already set the car to sport mode and it already feels so damn comfortable there is that uh yeah actually there's that firmness to the right but you know it is that assuring kind of firmness you set this into hybrid mode normal driving mode what you get it is a very supple very uh gentle very soft kind of ride so basically this car will easily out comfort a Mercedes-Benz E-Class to performance. The 530E is also not a car you would find in any way underpowered and this is even with the, uh, bat the hybrid battery depleted. You see right now I'm driving this car in sport mode but there is practically zero charge left in the battery. There is more than enough pace on tap this 2 liter b 48 engine even in this reduced state of tune i have to say it is a fantastic 2 liter turbo engine no question what a lovely engine even though this carries a 530 badge in performance terms this real in reality really is a 520i plus because the engine carries the 520i's 190 horsepower tune so you see with this car even though it says 252 combined horsepower you really only get 252 horses when the battery is fully charged all right whereas in the 530i you get 252 horsepower at all times yesterday i did drive this car around in hybrid mode and um, when the battery is depleted okay the engine does feel a little hesitant but when you switch this into sport mode everything just sharpens up and it sharpens up in a way that you know it does not feel tiresome you know some cars right when you put into sport mode they become too loud they become too harsh but no this this 
sport mode here it feels rapid it feels um eager raring but you know it's still pleasant to live with and i think bmw has been very careful in the way they tune firstly it is a car that you can live with every day but what it does is that it makes your everyday commute that little bit more enjoyable so i mean this is definitely not the best car you can take for your sunday morning drives when you are doing your business runs from kl to chiras to klang you know uh, rawang and all that right and you have to cover multiple places in the same day it allows you to enjoy the mundane nature of your drive that little bit more so that it does not it's not too boring and this is where having that electric motor really comes in handy because in stop go traffic like what i'm sitting in here now in traffic jams and whatnot the electric motor really makes the uh the regaining of speed the takeoff from standstill that much more effortless and stress-free compared to a regular combustion car to sum up the 530e here this is really a great car to use you know if you have to cover multiple if you are those type that need to cover multiple locations at one go this car in other words this is a great and tireless workhorse for the businessman and if you remember when bmw first launched the 5 series the tagline was of the car is that it's a business athlete and this 530e here absolutely absolutely encapsulates that tagline what are the kind of situations or usage that does not uh, that this car is not entirely suited for well if you regularly drive this car on long distances you really are better off in the 530i for two reasons one if you always have to travel out this outstations between states the boot space here may be a bit too small for your luggage that's one and the other thing is that with a plug-in hybrid in order to accommodate the battery you have a smaller fuel tank okay and like it or not even though bmw has managed to tune the suspension that the 530e hardly feels encumbered dynamically by the battery fact of the matter is after 50 60 kilometers on the highway that battery at the back is dead weight it is the combustion engine that is doing all the driving as you cover that long distance from kl to penang jb guantan so the thing is that and with a smaller fuel tank what this means is you need to refuel this car more frequently than you would with a 530i so the the whole this whole thing i've i've said this a few times before plug-in hybrids great if your primary commute is largely urban but if you have to do a lot of regular long distance driving you really are still better off with the regular petrol model as a whole uh, that aside there really is very very little to fault with the 530e 